This is uh, uh, so. This is something different from what you have been hearing, and it's uh, though the name of the colloquium is like understanding geometry in high dimension. Uh, the pictures you will be seeing are two dimension. Uh, so anyway, so this is uh, the title of the talk is combinatorial Macbeth regions for semi-algebraic set systems. Uh, there's basically one lemma, theorem, whatever you call it, uh, I want to prove uh, during this 30 minutes, and that's it. Okay, so it will be simple, hopefully. Uh, this is a joint work with Kunal. Kunal is uh, at DataShape Group in India. Uh, Bruno, who is a PhD student at University Paris East, and uh, Nabil, who is uh, also at the uh, same institute as Bruno. Bruno uh, and Kunal are in the audience, so. If you find some mistakes in this talk, it is because of them and not because of me. Okay, uh, so, okay. so let's see. Uh, so, so what uh, what what kind of set systems uh, am I be interested in? Okay, so you will have some set of points in Euclidean space. So let's say some points in R two, and I'm interested in subsets of these points. So how do we generate subsets of these points? We have some family of our objects that we like. So for me, it is like unit disks in R two, and I intersect this unit disk with this black set of points and get subsets of these points. I'm interested in some properties of these subsets that I can get, okay? So another interesting object is like this. So you have some set of points in R2 and now you're intersecting the, you're generating the subset by intersecting it with rectangles. Okay, so, so uh, the, the talk is about set systems that you, 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 that you get by intersecting with semi-algebraic regions. I won't define semi-algebraic regions but for people who know semi-algebraic regions, they will have to identify the technique goes through for semi-algebraic regions. But for those who don't know what is the semi-algebraic regions, think of unit disks and rectangles, okay? And points in R2, basically, okay? Okay, so, so the, the, this, this work is motivated by a result of uh, Macbeth from 1952, where he proved this really incredible result. So let me write the bound first, and then I just uh, uh, say what this Okay, so he proved that, let's say you have a unit volume convex body in some, let's say in RD, and let's say you have a parameter epsilon, okay? Now, uh, for, this, for this convex body K, you can build a small connection of convex subsets of this convex body. Each of, uh, each of these convex sets will have volume, theta epsilon, and they will satisfy some special property. What is that special property? The special property is that if you have any half plane in RD, and if you intersect this half plane with the convex body, and the volume is more than epsilon, then you will have a convex set from this family that will be completely contained inside the intersection. How many, uh, by, by small, what do I mean by how many in number? The bound is one by epsilon to the power one minus one by d plus one. Okay, and so the constant here. So I, I'm not writing the constant. That depends on R, uh, that depends on d, but this number doesn't at all depend on k. Okay, so this is kind of a surprising thing. So just like a see what I'm saying. So my favorite convex body is obviously a ball, and uh, then you have a hyperplane this h, and it has a vol intersection volume is greater than epsilon. You will find a family. You will fi find a convex body, here this is this green color one, from your family, whose size is only this, that will be contained, uh, completely contained inside the intersection, okay? So just looking at this uh, example itself, or this result itself, it's very natural for uh, people who work in combinatorial geometry to think like, yeah, this sounds something similar to what we are interested in. Can you guess what we, what that object is? So it's epsilonness, right? Normally, so if you have like let's say you have a set system with bounded VC dimension, and we know we have a small set of points from the universe such that any set of size greater than n epsilon will be hit by that point. But this is saying something more. It's saying that not only will be hit by one point, it will be hit by a point that is hit by an object that will be, who, who, which has large volume. And the, the motivation of this problem is to, can we have some, can we have some general, like 
analogous result in the combinatorial geometry settings for uh, Macbeth regions. Okay, so let's see. For let's say, so so I do I won't call it like combinatorial Macbeth regions. I will be just be calling it M nets. So the problem is, you have set of n points in say R M. You have some collection. You have some collection of subsets. Okay, of size. Each 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 subset is of size theta n epsilon, and now you have any half plane H. Okay, if the intersection of H with your set n is greater than n epsilon, then you will have one subset from that collection that will be subset of H intersection k. Okay, this is a combinatorial generalized a combinatorial analog of Macbeth the the result. Okay, so. If when you are working with finite sets, okay, this is not surprising, right? I mean, I, I can, I can like, I will build all like, I will, I will like enumerate all subsets of size n epsilon, and this will be true, right? All subset of n epsilon of k, and I will get this uh, number, but that will be too many subsets, okay? We want something like this, a bound that is independent of n, okay? So similarly, I can ask the same question for disks also, right? M nets. So what, or what I call shape. So by shape here means like a semi-algebraic region with constant description complexity. Okay. But for the rest of the talk, just think of discs and half planes. It will be easier for me and for you also. Okay. So this is already quite late in the day. Uh, so, so the goal was to build a discrete analog of Macbeth tool. So the the question, the natural question is, what is the Minimum size of an M net. Okay, so I want a M net with that is of small size. Okay, the bound that you get is something like this: it's one by epsilon phi of d by epsilon comma d. So I will explain these terms later. But phi is what is called the shallow cell complexity of the set system. D is the VC dimension of the set system, and the set system I'm considering is semi-algebraic. So points and half spaces. The set system that I generate by points and half spaces. Points or unit disk balls, or points or balls, rectangles, points or rectangles, things like this. Okay. What this result directly gives you? Okay. So this gives you M nets for this rectangles, lines, fat objects, but it doesn't give you for general convex sets. So let's say the family of objects that I'm intersecting <coughs> with the finite set and getting my subsets. Those the family of object is general convex sets. Okay, I don't get a result for that. So why is that? Because the family itself does, doesn't have bounded complexity, right? A convex set can have arbitrary number of vertices on the boundary, or arbitrary number of faces. Okay, so like we are interested in shapes that have like nice like bounded complexity, basically. Okay, and so you can also prove that this bound is uh, tight for half planes itself. Okay, so before I give the, so the goal of the talk is to give a proof for this. Almost complete, slightly incorrect proof for this. Okay, uh, so I need to build some, like give some definitions so that you can understand the notations that I was using. So we, we are interested, so we will be working with discrete, like abstract set systems where you have a ground set X, we have a collection of subsets of X, which is sigma, and the pair x comma sigma is what is called set system. Uh, we also sometimes call this thing as hypergraphs or range spaces, things like this. Okay, so one example is given below. You have set of x is the set of black points, and the subsets are like the points contained inside this colored circles. Okay. So, given a uh, given an abstract set system, you can define what is called projection. Projection is, so let's say, take a subset y of x, okay, and you calculate, and you can, uh, you calculate all unique intersections that you can get by intersecting elements of sigma with y, okay, I denote it by sigma y, okay, so this is what is called projection of y onto sigma, okay. There's another thing, sometimes you're also interested in what is called bounded size projections okay so i'm not so the intersection can be of large size also but i'm all, only interested in intersections where the intersection size is less than equal to k okay this is crucial and this is we denoted by sigma of ky okay 
So, okay, so you, with these definitions, you can also define what is called a primal shadow function. Primal shadow function for a set system, okay? This is pi of sigma of m. This is the max, so it is the maximum number of projections you can get by projecting a set, or uh, uh, projecting a set y subset of x of size m onto sigma. Okay, this is what is called primal shadow function. So what is the VC dimension? VC dimension is the maximum uh, maximum of maximum of m such that pi sigma of m, pi sigma of m is to the power m. So what does it say? So it just says that uh, maximum size set subset uh, y such that when I do a projection of y in sigma, I will generate all subsets of y. Okay, it's so what's called shattering the subset. Okay, so this is what we call VC dimension. Then there is what is called primal uh, shattered dimension. Okay, so a set system has a primal shattered dimension D if pi sigma of m is bounded by m to the power D. Okay, so I'm, I didn't mention this result, but there's a famous result of uh, Saur and Scheller where uh, they showed that if VC dimension is bounded by D, then primal shattered dimension is also bounded by D. And it kind of goes the other way also, where if the primal shattered dimension is bounded by D, the VC dimension is bounded by D log D. So there's a small expansion, but okay, up to log, they're almost same. So what we are interested in, even finer uh, refinement of these definitions, what we are interested in is what is called shallow cell complexity. Okay, so let's say the set system X comma sigma has bounded VC dimension. But I am interested in something like how many, I'm interested in like given any subset y of x, how many subsets can I generate by projecting y onto sigma of size less than or equal to k, okay? If, the, if that number is bounded by size of y times phi of y comma, size of y comma k, then I say that this set system x comma sigma has shallow cell complexity phi, okay? So it might look kind of odd, why am I using this uh, definition, but uh, in terms of uh, computing optimal bounds for epsilon net, this function phi, that the uh, function phi of the set system plays a crucial role, okay? So optimal size of epsilon net is something like this. So let's say the VC dimension is the, so if I wanna write it, everyone can see this? So it, it comes up with something like, up to a constant, it comes to something like this. Okay. And this is tight also. So okay, you, can, you can build synthetic sets by just random sampling, where the size of a cylinder will be greater than or equal to this. Okay. Okay, so. So these are examples of some of the, some geometric set systems and their corresponding shallow cell complexity. I don't want to go through all of them, but all of the nice ones that we are interested in, like points and half spaces or orthons, points and balls in RD or univariate polynomial, zero set of univariate polynomial constant degree in RD, have kind of like their, for each of them you have there's some nice shallow cell complexity, okay? Okay, so, so the so the, the result that I showed, like uh, uh, the bound on M nets, that result is possible because of two things that happened like within last year itself, uh, and not last year, so one thing I should not say happened in last year, but happened with the proof of good cats, uh, Edos's unit distance conjecture. And the few result that came out recently, so one result that uh, me, Kunal, and uh, Esther Ezra proved for uh, packing number for shallow cell complexity, which was, Later, Nabil get the Nabil gave a proof from the book for that uh, same paper. Like we wrote a, like a twenty-page paper, Nabil wrote like a half-page proof of the same result. And uh, these two, like the shallow packing lemma and polynomial partitioning, plays an important role in for, uh, to get the bound of the theorem I will be proving. So to let me define what is a delta packing number. So let's say you have a parameter delta, and I say a set system x comma sigma is delta separated, if you take any two sets from the set, set system, the size of the symmetric difference is greater than delta, okay? The other way of saying is, if you 
like you can look at the two sets in the set system as two points in the Hamming cube. Uh, basically, the Hamming distance is greater than delta. Okay, and the cardinality of max uh, cardinality of the maximal uh, cardinality of the largest delta separated sub collection of sigma is what is called the delta packing number of sigma. Okay, let me see this. Okay, so so uh, I just remove the slides, uh, but. This thing actually behaves. So let's say you have a set system with VC dimension d. Okay, the ground set has n points, like x size of x is n. The set system is well separated. Okay, delta separated. Then how many sets can you have? So the bound that comes out uh, comes out because of Hausler is it's n by delta to the part d. And this is same as let's say you have a unit. Uh, you, you have you have a cube of length n in Rd and you are, you are packing it with points so that any two points are delta distance away from each other, right? So how many points can I pack? It's n by delta to the power d. So it's like the behavior is behavior of VC dimension with respect to packing and behavior of uh, the dimension, uh, behavior of packing points in uh, cube of length or with edge length n is exactly the same, okay? Up to constants are exactly the same, okay? But you can prove a more refined version of this uh, result. So, as I already said, the initial result was by me, Kunal, and uh, Ezra, and then Nabil gave a much shorter and much more elegant proof for this result. So, what does this, res what does this result say? It says that, let's say your set system has VC dimension D, shallow cell complexity phi, and let's say the any set in the set system is of size less than or equal to k, okay? And any two sets are delta separated, okay? Symmetry difference is of size greater than, size of the symmetry difference is greater than delta. Then you will, the set can have at most these many sets. The set system can have as most these many sets, okay? Okay, and you can also show that this bound is also tight, okay? So, but I won't go into that uh, here. So. So uh, that was the packing lemma is one ingredient. The another ingredient is the what is called polynomial partitioning result. So this is a completely incorrect version of the polynomial partitioning result. This is not at all true, but assume this result is true. We can prove. I can give you a complete proof of the result. The actual result by Ma uh, Matoshek and Patakova in 2015 almost proves this result. Okay, but in a, with many more parameters, and I don't want to give the details of. That result, but what this result says is, let's say you have a set of points, uh, set a uh, set of n points p in R m, okay. Uh, let, then there exists a polynomial f of degree at most r to the power one by m, such that R m minus the zero set, okay, uh, has at most r maximally connected components, okay, and each connected component contains at most n by r points from your set p. Not only that, if you take any semi-algebraic sets of constant complexity, it intersects at most r to the power 1 minus 1 by n components, maximal components of r to the power r to the power m minus zf. Okay. And uh, just to make our life simple, I just assume that the zero set contains no points also. Well, this actually is not true, but for us, let's assume this and let's go. So, uh, what is the definition of crossing first? Okay, so I use the set, I use the term like a semi-algebraic set uh, O crosses R to the power one minus one by M connected components. Like I say a set A crosses a set B if the intersection of A and B is neither the empty set nor the whole set D. Okay. okay. So, so I, I don't think I have enough time to prove the, the result, but what you, so I just give you the idea of how to prove this. What you do is, let's assume that the, your set system is such that all the large sets are size n epsilon. So what you do is you, uh, you construct a maximal packing with each set is of size n epsilon and distance between, like separation between any two set is of size n epsilon by two, okay? So this is like an example of a maximal packing, okay? So the number of such sets you get is exactly the bound that you want from the theorem. 
And what is the property of this maximal packing? Since the, any large set is of size exactly epsilon n, either the large set is one of the sets in the packing, or it intersects this uh, uh, set in the packing in large, the set inter, it intersects a set inside the packing in large numbers. So like intersection of that set with one of the sets in the packing will be greater than or equal to n epsilon by two, okay? Then uh, using this property and using polynomial that that magical polynomial partitioning result that I just mentioned, uh, you can create some sets which are called mnets. Okay, for each of these sets, you partition the set and include it in your mnets, and then you can show just using the crossing number bounds that you get the that this exactly is the an mnet for the set system. Okay, so I, since John Allen is showing me the time, I don't have much. So uh, you still have to prove something, but assuming that uh, result of polynomial partitioning is true, you don't have to do much work. Just basic accounting will give you this result. Okay. So I'm not going through this proof, but uh, I want to say one more thing is. So uh, this this M net result also implies optimal size epsilon nets for all geometric set systems that we know of. Also. Okay. Again, I won't give the proof, but the proof is as you to construct a M net and do just random sampling. Okay and use alteration, okay? This is standard technique in probabilistic method. It will give you an optimal size of cell limits for almost all geometric set systems that you can think of, okay? Okay, so I'm not giving the proof, so let me conclude and to conclude with these three questions. So uh, uh, even though like there has been a lot of, as Mika said, a revolution in algebraic combinatorial geometry, I'm not, I, I'm very impressed with the revolution, but uh, ideally I want to write a proof that doesn't use techniques from this uh, algebraic revolution. I want a completely synthetic proof where I don't assume that the set system is a uh, semi-algebraic set system. It's just as a shallow cell complexity and bounded VC dimension. I want, to show, I want to show that that has a small size M nets. Okay, there's one question. Uh, there are some lower bounds result in our paper. We want to improve it because there's a gap between the upper bound and the lower bound and find uh, more application of mnets in commercial geometry.